What up, Fight World? Just kidding, ego. We got a fight tonight. ESPN. Let's get it. Lomachenko. The Matrix. Mr. High Tech. Aaron Percy was good. What up? Fuck ESPN. Wow. Fuck ESPN for what? Their pound for pound list? What up, y'all? Yeah, it's going to be one-sided for sure. I'd be real surprised if Madiaga puts on some kind of crazy, like Jeff Horn, Pacquiao type fight. Shout out to New Mexico. I was born out there. Live breakdowns. Man, y'all cook at the comments. Y'all must have wanted some boxing today. I've just been ripping the run and got my car washed. ESPN does suck. Fuck Jerry Jones. Why fuck Jerry Jones? Yeah. Shout out to New Mexico. Anthony. Vasily Lomachenko is talented. No one's really denying that. I don't. I haven't seen anybody that's denying that. Love you, ego. You keep it 100. That's my job. Keep it a buck with y'all. But everybody I hear talk about Lomachenko. I haven't heard one person say Lomachenko's trash or garbage. It's just to put him like where Bob Aram's putting him. And we all know he's a promoter. See, this is the thing. This is why I'm glad as, as boxing ego, as ego, I have the creative control to talk this boxing like I don't work for top rank or Aram or HBO or Al Heyman so I could talk about whoever anybody I, if Errol Spence is doing great if Terrence Crawford is doing great Cold War none of that matters to me I could tell you all that and I could tell you w with sincerity and all honesty you know what I'm saying but you know what I mean I, I, it's hard for me to trust promoters especially when they're promoting a package like Floyd Mayweather for example Bob Aram doesn't really typically say too much great things about Floyd right now. But if you go back, watch the tapes, back when Floyd was with Top Rank, Bob Aaron was saying stuff like, oh, he's the best fighter since Muhammad Ali. And now he's not saying that. He's saying Lomachenko, he, he's a finisher and he's different. And Floyd is this and that. Floyd doesn't pull the trigger and doesn't finish. Like, that just sounds crazy. Now he's saying Lomachenko is, is the new Muhammad Ali. Like, come on, man. And again, I'm telling y'all, y'all can believe whatever you want and whoever you want, but I speak my piece. Lomachenko's a, a quality fighter. He can go far in this game if he keeps his head intact and stuff like that. But you can't compare uh, Lomachenko to Muhammad Ali. Definitely can't compare him to Muhammad Ali, but you can't even compare him to Floyd because Floyd, if you're critiquing Floyd and what, what he got going on, the motherfucker's 40. He's 40 years old, so why would we keep someone who's 29 and hold them at a standard of a person who's 40 and more accomplished with almost 50 fights? It will be 50 August 26th with 50 fights. You know what I'm saying? How can we compare the person who's 8-1 and one and almost 30 and done less than Floyd? You So you can't even compare him to him, and you definitely can't compare him to an icon of the sport like Muhammad Ali. So I think it's bogus. Another difference is... Aside from the 8-1 and, and having a short pro career, he exudes the skills. Nobody's doubting that. But at the same time, Lomachenko, you know what I mean? Like Mikey Garcia, that's a fight that would tell me something. I talked to Roy Jones. Shout out to him. There's a reason I love Roy Jones. He was my favorite fighter. Like, I tell you guys this all the time. And still, didn't I just say that? That's what it takes sometimes. You take something from me, I'm coming to get it back. Now, if you beat me, you beat me. I say, okay, we had a good night. I'm still coming to get back. But if you beat me dishonestly, I'm coming to get Pensacola. Now, there's a reason I fuck with Roy Jones. Because he's he's trill. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes he acts a little bit company mannish. But a lot of times he gets it. He'll be checking Jim Lampley and stuff like that. But I just talked to him not too long ago and did an interview. The interview's on the, on the, on the channel. It was after an HBO fight. And he's like, he said, Guillermo Rigondeaux was at 122. Lomachenko was at 126. Why didn't we get to see that? Why? Why? Why didn't we get to see that? Then he said, that would show me something. That's exactly how I feel. 8-1 and one is great. You know what I mean? He, He's, um, I don't know. He's 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 doing what he's supposed to be doing. But it's you can't say you've seen everything you need to see. 
in that short period of time. You know what I'm saying? Why didn't we get to see Riggin out? Or even, like I said, Mikey Garcia. If Lomachenko dogs Mikey Garcia and it looks like Jason Sosa, okay, he's a real, real problem. Because we just seen Mikey Garcia move up five pounds and he outclassed Broner in a fashion worse than bigger guys. You know what I'm saying? Sean Porter did good, but Broner clinched a lot and it was kind of an ugly fight, things like that. And Sean Porter got knocked down. Mikey Garcia didn't get knocked down and beat Broner all rounds but two or three. You know what I'm saying? And he was the guy coming up in weight versus Sean Porter who had more of a weight advantage because he has fought as high as 165. You know what I'm saying? If Lomachenko beat Mikey Garcia and dogged him easily, okay, that's a huge statement. Beating Miguel Mariaga on ESPN, that's just business as usual. That don't prove nothing to me. Mariaga's coming off a loss, a recent loss. Like, and see, this is crazy. You want to compare him to Floyd. People got mad. They were mad when Floyd fought Berto, a two-time former world champion coming off win streak. He had two stoppages, Josecito Lopez and Upshaw. And they despised and detested when Floyd fought Berto. Yet, Lomachenko tonight is fighting a motherfucker who got knocked down at 126 by Oscar Valdez in April. April 22nd, because I remember I was at the Berto Porter fight the night that fight happened. That's why I didn't go to it in my home state of California. You know what I mean? Because I was in New York covering Berto Porter. I thought that was the bigger event. You know what I'm saying? And now he's moving up and fighting Lomachenko. That don't really prove nothing to me. You know what I'm saying? What does that prove to me? It like it to me when certain fighters, like even Errol Spence, Errol Spence, he needed a Kell Brook to boost him higher. You know what I mean? You could beat the Bundus and the Chris Algieri, but a name like Kell Brook, that will plummet you and catapult you beyond that. You know what I'm saying? That'll, that'll get you over that hump where people could be like, okay, this is what this dude is about. This is what he's made out. That's what he's made of. You know what I'm saying? And that's just what it is. So, Lomachenko is a good fighter, but I want to see Riga now. Uh, Mikey Garcia, anything like that. And that will prove something to me. That'll tell me some stuff. I'm not even reading no trolling comments. We just working. I don't, well, I said plummet, catapult. You feel better? Who cares? Bottom line, you can't do what I do, so just chill out. I know vocabulary. I know what plummet means, but this is a freestyle. I said I also said catapult, but you're gonna take the one word I said that didn't equate or it makes sense or whatever. Chill. But um like I said, Lomachenko's a good fighter. Yeah, man, I wear my stunner shades at night. Yeah, I did read it. I read I try to read y'all typing quick, but I try to read a lot of the questions. But like I said, Lomachenko's a good fighter. But just like Roy Jones said, you beat certain people, that'll show us something. Like, you know what I mean? You beat Mikey Garcia. Shit, I tip my hat to you. It's all about the matchups. But Bob Arum, he's selling the product. Now he's comparing him to Muhammad Ali. But when, when he had Floyd, he was saying Floyd was Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? It just it, And now he's talking about Lomachenko's this marvelous finisher. Put Floyd in there with Josecito Lopez or Aaron Martinez. Guy, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Miguel Mariaga type Jason Sosa in, in Floyd's division. And you will see the same shit. Floyd's fighting at a much higher caliber than some of Lomachenko's fights. Now, don't get me wrong for having under 10 fights. Lomachenko does have some good names, Gary Russell, but you have to even do your homework. Gary Russell, a lot of y'all motherfuckers was saying Gary Russell was a bum killer. He was doing what you do to Deontay Wilder to Gary Russell saying he fights tomato cans. You know what I'm saying? So at the point where he fought Lomachenko, we knew Gary Russell was looking special, but he hadn't really fought any names. The Johnny Gonzalez fight didn't happen until after. ESPN dropped the ball. How? What did they do? Like when Floyd fought Robert Guerrero or nah. See, see, this is the problem is like some of y'all don't know boxing. You think you do, but you don't. Robert Guerrero was a mandatory. So, I mean, and he had been calling Floyd out for a year plus. So, I mean, Floyd chose that fight coming out out of jail he fought Cotto, went to jail, and he fought his mandatory. So he, he fulfilled a mandatory obligation, made an easy $32 million, And then he fought Canelo the same year. So if you're going to tell the story, tell the whole thing. Guerrero, 
had one loss that he avenged by knockout at that time. He had beaten Birdo, and he was the mandatory. Yeah, I don't really see a problem with that. And like I said, Floyd was coming out of jail, so you have to factor in everything. Don't just pick and choose little excerpts and pieces, you know what I mean? Because when Gennady Golovkin, when he was fighting Dominic Wade, I don't even know who Dominic Wade, I knew who Guerrero was. I watched a lot of Guerrero fights, actually. I watched Vicente Escobedo, Orlando Salido, Guerrero versus Selchuk Aiden, Guerrero versus Andre Berto. I didn't know who the fuck Dominique Way was, for real. And people were like, oh, Golovkin's fighting him because he's a mandatory. You know what I'm saying? You can't look at Guerrero now, him being retired and the wars he went after. Look at him when Floyd fought him. That's what a lot of people do, especially with Floyd's career. They they start judging, like, oh, Zab Judah lost to Pauli Malinaji. That was way after. You know what I'm saying? Zab Judah was still a problem when Floyd fought him, even though he lost to uh, Baldemir and uh, Costa Zoo and shit like that. But he was still speedy, and he gave Floyd some work in those early rounds. Who is Jeff Horn? Russell Lomachenko, too. Shit, both of them look like they've improved since that first fight, so I wouldn't mind it. I mean, put it this way. This, this is how I know when fans be bullshitting. Is there anybody in this comment section that would would even though Lomachenko outclassed and schooled Gary Russell is there anybody who wouldn't rather see a now champion Gary Russell versus Lomachenko over Miguel Mariaga if you're really being honest with yourself who's who's really out there like nah fuck fuck Gary Russell too we know Lomachenko won easy the first time but things have changed since that point you know what I'm saying and I I I know for a fact based on the role that Gary Russell's been on and how he's been calling out Lomachenko and stuff, I would much rather see that than Miguel Mariaga because Gary Russell Jr., even in his losses, he's not get, or even in his one loss, he never got knocked down. You know what I mean? Versus Miguel Mariaga, both times he stepped up. Nicholas Walters and Oscar Valdez, he got knocked down. And he lost. And he's a lesser name. You know what I'm saying? Gary Russell, at least, is now a champion, so he has some confident wins. Um, I thought Oscar Escandon was a, a very game, tough fighter. And he had to not punch himself out and put some things together. Um, I don't know if I see a knockout. I, I think L uh, Lomachenko's knockouts are a little bit deceptive because if you look at his record, you'd be like, damn, nine fights, he got six, seven knockouts or whatever. So you would think he's this huge puncher, but I don't really think he is. It's just people get frustrated because they can't do nothing with him. And he's so energetic. And then it's like a demoralizing um, you can't hit the motherfucker. He's a squirrel. He's a rabbit. He's everywhere. Ba 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 ba. You know what I'm saying? It's like demoralizing. It's like taking your spirit more than like a Golovkin. Golovkin will hit you with some shit on top of your head, and you know that has him wrung. So I don't really think Lomachenko's power is. That's why a fight with Mikey Garcia, I think, would be hard. I think it would be very hard for him because Mikey's. He just went in there with Broner, who probably outweighed him on fight night. He, he had just moved up one fell swoop, moved up five pounds, and he took Broner's power with what Broner did land. So Lomachenko, I don't think, I don't think, I don't rate his power like that. I think he's just a good fighter, you know, outclass you, and his, his stoppages are coming from outsourcing and, and fucking with you. Got to get rid of these haters? I, I'm not even paying attention. I don't even know what they say. Zab versus AB. I ain't seen too much of Zab lately. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man. Yeah, y'all talking about um, that Bruce Jenner and Caitlyn type conversations and stuff. You just getting blocked. I don't have time for that. I'm trying to watch this Lomachenko fight. It's a good fight on right now. I'm about to go watch. What about Wilder? What do y'all want to talk about? Salute. Salute to y'all, man. Set up an interview with Nate Campbell. I'm I'm down to interview whoever. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. This is this is boxing. It's serious business. I'm I'm a businessman. I'll, I'll interview whoever if it makes sense for all parties. 
But the good thing with Lomachenko's fight is it's on ESPN. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you have to have a premium network. And I heard the undercards are being streamed on ESPN's website. You need to get out there more? Not really. No, I don't. I mean, I'm already out there. I'm. You know, the funny thing is, y'all, y'all be saying like that. There are people who have more interviews and be in the gym every day, and I'm more known. I go to the fights, and people know me more than they know them. So, you know what I'm saying? You can... And I make more money than them. So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I do what I want when I want when it comes to this boxing. And I had to work for it. It's not a, It's not coming from a place of, like, gloating or, or trying to be cocky. It's just it is what it is. Like, the way I came up in the game is different. I didn't write for some article or write articles for some website. This is all from the ground up. This is something that I created under my own imprint. You know what I'm saying? So... My upbringing, salute to everybody who does whatever they do. I have my own plans and my own vision. I'm definitely up for constructive criticism and stuff like that. But you got to remember, what I do is is kind of what I see fit for the brand. You know what I mean? And I, I told you guys, like, when it when it's truth be told, you actually, you end up losing more money than, like, when, like, um putting out for the fights initially because you got to pay for your hotel expenses, your travel and stuff like that, which is not a problem because the reason I do do it is because it's for the big picture. You know what I'm saying? You, you meet people, you get to network and enhance your brand over the, over the stretch. So it makes sense for me to, to cover fights. But I mean, I could talk and call fights from the house and like I said, I still, I do cool for myself. So Breaking down. Let's talk about the steel in, in Wilder's right hand. Respect to you, mate. Respect to y'all. Respect to the real boxing fans. I like how Mikey Garcia pulled up. That's some G shit. That's that Oxnard in him. He, you know what I'm saying? And see, this, <laughs> this is so funny in the fight game. It's like just the same day, like I'm pretty sure Lomachenko probably didn't know uh, Mikey was finna pull up on him. And just the same day, he I guess he put out an interview and he was like kind of talking shit about Mikey Garcia style. And before that, days before, he was like, he's not a level and stuff like that. But they both seemed pretty buddy buddy when they was in in front of each other. So, you know, I mean, that's where the respect as a fighter comes in when you when you face to face. Well, Deontay Wilder got that adamantium right right hand. Hey, Bob Berserker Barrage. Drop her. Yeah, man. I like Mikey Garcia. He's 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 like an Errol Spence of his division. Not saying they fight alike, because I don't want to hear no dumb call. Hey, we mean Errol Spence. He's not even Southpaw. I'm not talking about fight style. I'm talking about really kind of quiet and you know he does his own thing and acts how he acts and in the ring, he's a fucking monster. He's like he's the silent killer type versus Broner or somebody. Broner, he did a lot of this for the for the Mikey Garcia fight, but it was Mikey who delivered, and that's kind of what Errol Spence is. And I respect guys like that. Andre Ward's the same way. Terrence Crawford, you know what I mean? They're not no punks. Like if you get in their face, like Deary John or um, Hank Lundy, you know what I mean? They will push you and they will g up and and check you, but. Overall, like if the person like Victor Postal, you didn't really see Crawford and Victor Postal pushing each other and going at it. So if they're met with respect, they'll respect you. And I think that's what Mikey Garcia is. I don't think he's like really out there trying to um, bully people, but he ain't no punk either. And a pussy back. How did you get that name? I'm picking Canelo over Golovkin. For the longest time, I was picking Golovkin, but some things made me change it. TC is a real one. Buzz is a real one. And, and you know, for me, like, I, I really, y'all don't understand. I really fuck with boxing. You know what I mean? I care about boxing more than, um, like, individual fighters. Like, I like, I you know what I mean? I love, like, watching individual fighters, and I have favorites that I really like watching. But I really care about the sport more than anything. You know what I'm saying? So if people are doing right by the sport, I don't really care. I don't care if you, if you have a defensive pot shotting style or if you're a slugger if you could scrap you could scrap 
You know what I mean? That's why I embrace all the, the personality types, like the Mike Garcia, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, Andre Ward. They don't do a bunch of memes and um, banter, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Before the fight, but they all handle their business in the fight. So I could respect that. But I like the, the Mayweather. He's like, Shane Mosley, you broke. Why, why, why you got that green shirt on? You got a green shirt. You look like a fucking leprechaun. Hey, hey, it's okay, baby. It, it's not our fault. Shane Mosley got a big nose. You know what I mean? And the people like Mayweather who's doing the trash talking, the Conor McGregor's, the Broners. You know what I mean? I like that too. I, I feel like it, to me, I just like variety and I feel like it's all needed. You can't just, if everyone acted like Andre Ward in the game, then it would, it would be boring because everybody acts the same. But for the Wards, you know what I'm saying? Just family man, clean cut, like handles their business, man of God. You have Broner. You know what I mean? So you have everything in between. That's what I like in the sport of boxing. Same thing with like, I wouldn't like it if everyone fought like Rigandow. What makes Rigandow special is he has a special skill set. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what it is. He has a special skill set. So if everyone had that same exact special skill set and precision and everyone was southpaw, then that would be boring. Shout out to LBC. I see y'all. So, yeah, that's, I mean, that's how I am with everything. Food, like, sometimes I wake up, I want pizza. Sometimes I want sushi. I don't just want one thing. And that's what I love about boxing is because I watch different people to learn different things. It's not just one thing that I request all the time. You know what I mean? Um, make sure y'all hit that like button. Y'all be slacking on the live stream likes. Hit that like. I'll go a little bit longer. Um... If it's if Ray Beltran's coming on, if y'all can just um, tell me, cause I'm trying to see his fight. He been knocking, he been knocking his last couple opponents out. Hit that like button, y'all. Yeah. Lomachenko's overrated. Shout out to South Egypt. Shout out to y'all. We almost had 100 likes. We need to get over that 100 mark, man. We need over that 100. Appreciate the likes, man. Appreciate the super chats, the, the donations. You guys have been holding it down. Um, I'm going to try to cover some fights. I don't know. We just, we just working, man. I got a lot. I got a lot on the plate, but this shit is all easy work. And the reason I say that is because my whole life I prepare for moments like this so it should be easy like there's times where you get overwhelmed or or whatever but that shit fades if you if you know how to keep your head on tight but my whole life has been prepared for moments like this so it should really be easy and ultimately the thing I like is I get to work on a brand like for me you know what I'm saying my whole life I've worked jobs for people other people's directives, other people's mission statements. Now we're working on the ego mission statement, the boxing ego brand. We we doing what we like. Fuck you, nigger. That's what's up. Blocked. Get your little dumbass in timeout. Um, West P. He just donated two dollars. Super chat. Salute. I appreciate all the the super chats and the donations. Ego, what is your field in? I don't even know what that means, to be honest. What is my field in? Yeah, he getting blocked. You, you talking stupid stuff, racism and all that. That's, I don't know. I got time for that. We're talking about boxing. You know what they say. There's a quote. It says, um, it says, I don't even remember. I'm not even going to try to quote it. It's just basically like, Talking about the the lack of a sound argument is usually that dumb shit. When people say, if you're talking boxing and people are just jibber jabbering like stupid shit, that's usually because they don't have no no real facts. Uh, shout out to Puzzle two four seven three sixty five, another two dollar super chat man. We doing the live stream. I've been trying to hit y'all off. Pause with more live streams. So like y'all see, this is a real person. This ain't no fucking catfish. This ain't no. Um, a robot or something this is a real person shout out to the oc peace out puzzle appreciate the super chat when is tk fighting i'm not sure he's he's just trying to get healthy that's that's the name of the game people putting tevin farmer and 
people putting out Troy King as a as a human, their their health is is more important, and, and that's the first priority. So he's just trying to get healthy, just like Tevin Farmer. I mean, obviously different things, but Troy King had a detached retina, and my dude Tevin Farmer got shot in the hand. So health, 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 health. Should Wilder fight White? I mean, it really depends. It depends on who else. I, I didn't have a problem with the Dillian White fight. I think Dillian White's a good salesperson. He he was entertaining both in the fight with Derek Chisora, but before they were throwing tables and shit at each other. So I think he's a, and, and Wilder's not shy of words either. So I think it would be a good build up. It could be a good fight. Ultimately, I told you, I'll say it again. And this is no disrespect or shade to Dillian White because I fuck with him. But um, I don't think the fans, the people who go out of their way to hate on Wilder and call him bum squad and all that, I don't think they would give Wilder credit if he were to knock out Dillian White. And they'll just say, oh, AJ already did it. Joshua already knocked him out. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have a personal problem with the fight. I wouldn't mind seeing it. But if they can lasso a champion, Joseph Parker, Joshua, he called him out, or even a guy who's just deadly like Luis King Kong Ortiz, I think all of those should take preference. Uh, preference or precedence over Dillian White but if he's gonna fight another like a lesser known like like Johan Duhapas or like a Eric Molina like obviously not them because he already fought them but what I'm saying is if he's gonna fight someone on that level I would prefer Dillian White over that but if it's um like a ob oblig um obligation like a Bermain Stavern I mean that's just a business but me personally, I would like to see Joshua the most, but other than that, Luis Ortiz and then uh, Parker fight unification. Stevenson versus Ward. Um, I, I'm not picking against Ward. I told you, him and Terrence Crawford, they got the juice now, and I'm not talking peds. I'm just talking about like like Bishop. He got the juice. So it's and for me, knowing Ward, being in his gym and stuff like that. It's hard for me to personally, from what I've seen, I don't know Adonis like that. He follows me on Twitter or whatever, but it's hard for me to pick against that from what I've seen. And the other thing is, like, what Ward did is Ward, how it's mind-boggling to me that Adonis, he, he fought Chad Dawson after Ward, knocked him out brutally, and that kind of put him on the map. But Ward, who was still at 168, he managed to come up and fight Kovalev two times, and Adonis Stevenson still ain't fought Kovalev, you know, which was a, a fight that had been talked about longer than Ward and Kovalev. So, you know what I mean? I think Ward is he's pretty much giving himself, after two tough fights, you know what I mean, with Kovalev, even though the second one looked easier, but after two tough fights, training camps, mental preparation, I think he's he's reserved the right to kind of do what he wants next in his career. So if, if it's a big money fight you can get with like a Bell U or, you know what I mean, if he wants to tune up, I think he, he deserves that, to be honest. But I would pick him over Stevenson. Stevenson, yes, he has power. He can box a bit. But Stevenson's fighting from far and stuff, nah, I can't even say too much, but I know people that know people. And I heard Ward spar from far, and he was he was doing his thing with from far. So Adonis beating... Tavoris Cloud or Tom Carpency it doesn't really prepare you for a ward. So I would have to pick the safe bet and, and bang with ward on that. Pause. Thoughts on Danny Garcia versus Mikey Garcia. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, the only thing I would say is I'm not really with this weight class jumping. Like this, like this new era of boxing it's like people don't even, they're not even respecting weight classes for real. Like they just, they're doing whatever. Like they just, Kel Brook, oh, fuck it, I'll fight Golovkin. Like, like all people wanted for Kel Brook was to see him fight after Sean Porter. Stop fighting people that we know can't beat you. JoJo Dan, Kevin BZA, Frankie, you know what I'm saying? Fight top welters. No one asked you to go all the way up and fight a top middleweight. That's just stupid. You know what I'm saying? Like, when people say they want you to fight somebody, they mean in your weight class. They don't mean, like, jump all through the... So that's the only thing. I like Danny Garcia and Mikey Garcia, but Mikey Garcia, he's been on the fast track. He just uh, came back and jumped weight classes after the two-year layoff with top rank, that little legal shit. 
and then he he moved up to 40 and fought Elias Rojas. Then he moved to 35, became a champion. Then didn't defend his his lightweight belt and fought Broner at 140. So if he were to fight Danny Garcia, I would presume it has to happen at 147. So I mean that's that's asking a lot to keep moving in weight. You know what I mean? And it, it's it's. I as a fan, I would love to see it, Garcia versus Garcia. But it's a bit unfair if you think about it, because Danny Garcia, he's had some time to acclimate. He had Paulie Malignaggi, Robert Guerrero, uh, Samuel Vargas, Keith Thurman. So he has more experience at 147. But stylistically and stuff, I think it's a good fight. But I think these fighters should chill out with the weight class jumping. Especially like even Lomachenko, he's talking about moving to 35 and he wants to fight Crawford. What? Fight Rigandow. He's at least because Rigandow's do or die. If if he moves to thirty five, the Rigandow shit is dead. That's not gonna happen. Shout out to my dude Caleb Plant. He real focused. Yeah, I heard that uh, David Benavidez and Anthony Durrell that fights off. It's pretty disappointing for for that division super middleweight because Anthony Durrell's supposed to fight Caleb Smith, his mandatory or whatever, and eliminate whatever it was, and that fight fell apart. And then Anthony Durrell was supposed to fight David Benavidez, another good fight, and then that fight got called off because, I guess, Durrell got injured. So And then James DeGale, he, he got his teeth knocked out, so I don't know where he's been. He's at the dentist or something. i seen him working out on Instagram, but super middleweight. Zordo Ramirez, where the fuck is he? I heard he, has, I heard he might fight in Arizona, but it's probably not against the top name, so... Super middleweight got to get it together. But I like Caleb Plant. That's my dude. He always shows love every time I see him. And he's he's focused. He's real focused. And he wants those big opportunities. Hit them likes. Whoever put that comment, you already know what it is. Thoughts on Abel Sanchez comments about Charlo? What do you say what, what, in, in relation to what? What is Abel Sanchez talking about? Do you think Amir Khan could have had a chance against Mayweather with his hand speed? A lot of people, like even Pauli Malignaggi surprised me. He was making it sound like um, he favored Amir Khan. I, I really would. I like respect to Khan. You know what I'm saying? I, like I'd be in the Virgil 100 gym and they all celebrate Khan and say he's a good dude and a great fighter and you know what I mean? I don't have no problem with Khan, but I, I, I'm i not. Certain guys you don't pick against. It's just not really wise. So I wouldn't have picked Khan to beat Mayweather. You know what I mean? Khan, he does great against boxers, but Floyd is just different. Floyd shows the ability to adapt. And I think with known, like, chin issues, then I think um, Floyd would probably fight Khan aggressive because you have to tame that speed. He's not going to just be like Danny Garcia. See, the thing with like Danny Garcia, why that was super competitive, is Danny Garcia is mad slow. He's real slow. You know what I'm saying? Not saying he's not a good fighter because he has good timing and other intangibles, but he's not fast. He's not really a quick-footed or necessarily the fastest hand. What he excels is is timing and like just he has an underrated ring IQ. Like He can box. But Floyd's different because he can box... He could be aggressive. He's a complete fighter, and he's faster. So, I, I mean, he has accuracy, timing. And people forget about this. Mir Khan got knocked down by Julio Diaz at a catchweight. You know what I mean? At a catchweight. And he got knocked down and hurt. So, if Julio Diaz, who's a career lightweight, and Keith Thurman and other guys, Kendall Holt destroyed him in lighter divisions... And Kendall Holt lost to like Lamont Peterson. If 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 Julio Diaz can hurt you, Floyd can hurt you, at 147. So I don't understand what people. I mean, I to me, I don't know about y'all, but I had Chris Algieri. I I think he hurt him in the first round when Khan fought him. So to me, that whole Amir Khan Floyd thing, I don't think it would have been what people thought. You know what I mean? Oh, is yeah, Gilberto Zordo Ramirez might be fighting uh, Jesse Hart. That's a good fight, though. Uh, I forgot about that. I did hear that, but I don't know if it's confirmed. But but yeah, that. So I thought I was at first. I was like, yeah, he's not really gonna fight no one big. But yeah, if he fights Jesse Hart from Philly, that's a good fight. And I think it's a mandatory or something. 
Shout out to Mark. He said he's out. Joshua said Miss Bomb Squad is next. When did Joshua say that? And I heard Eddie Hearn said Kubrat Pulev, then Ortiz, Luis King called Ortiz, and then Wilder. So I don't know where you're getting that. Man, Karen, she she got eliminated. She got kicked off the island in, in yesterday's chat. What up, public speaker, Fluffy? Luis Ortiz is a is a beast. Somebody said get them likes to two hundred. Yeah, man. I'm about to go watch this ESPN card and eat something. I got this Hawaiian barbecue. I'm about to eat the leftovers from that. Shout out to Jacksonville, Florida, Orange Park, Florida. Big fan of ego. I've been to Florida a couple of times. It's humid as fuck, but good people, good food. Some parts of Florida be tripping, though. They be having all that Trayvon Martin and all that weird-ass shit. People killing people. Alligators in the sewer and shit. Shout out to my dude, Big Baby Miller. Someone said, how how far is he going to go? I mean, that's up to the fighter, but I think he has pretty good stamina and stuff. He has some power, good stamina, especially for his size. I personally think what he should do is try to come in a little bit lighter. Like, I know that's part of his claim to fame, and he probably likes having the exercise, and he can operate with the exercise. But I thought I think if he gets to, like, a swift 268, I think that would probably be – he'd probably have even more um, – be more of a problem especially when you start fighting upper echelon people who could push you who have like crazy power like most of the top guys have crazy power joshua wilder ortiz you know what i'm saying so i think it would behoove him to to come in a little bit lighter but shout out to my dude big baby miller he's a speaker too i like that i like how he speaks up con stops brooke hell no i don't know about now maybe but i, I wouldn't pick that How can folks join the brand and help help build? I mean, there's multiple ways y'all can. Just support any way you can. I mean, if you guys have other ideas, let me know. A live calling show. Yeah, man, we're going to do we're going to try to do everything. We came to take over, not take part, as Conor McGregor would say. War versus better be if, I mean, it could be a good fight. But like like I said, like, unless he gets into a mandatory position, I don't see that fight happening because, like, you don't just skip up the ladder like that. Ooh, like, better be if he ain't really fought nobody. I mean, he, he clearly has power. But I personally would like to see him in with, like, a Sullivan Brera. That fight was supposed to happen. Uh, even a Joe Smith Jr., Marcus Brown. Like, show you can blow through them guys, all with power, all good fighters. And then, you know what I mean? get a championship run. Bradley versus AB. I heard Bradley's retiring, so that's not even conversation worthy. Ward is pound for pound number one, definitely. Where will you guys put Canelo Golovkin winner on the pound for pound list? Give me a number. Or would you would you not put him in the pound for pound? Three, five, three, top four. Those are all solid. Who will be Broner's new trainer? Is he not with Stafford anymore? I didn't hear nothing about that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. You know, honestly, if Golovkin and Canelo fight and it's a decisive victory, I don't mind if you guys put them in the, the top five, even though I don't really do a pound for pound list, but... I mean, that's it's a good fight. They stylistically prove, um, have things that they can offset with the other person. Ego, a.k.a. Mr. Legend. Y'all funny. Amir Khan versus Loma at 140. That's a fictitious type of fight. That's not anything that can happen. Khan can't make 140 probably now. And Lomachenko's still at 30, so that's 10 pounds. Broner, Felix, Diaz, that's a good fight. That's a real good fight. Tony Harrison, I don't know. Yeah, probably taking some time off after being stopped. 
Is Broner leaving his trainer? Because y'all keep asking about Broner training. Virgil Hunter would be good because Virgil don't play. You know what I'm saying? Virgil going to make sure things are on the up and up. Broner is done, somebody said. Broner, Kareem Mayfield. Kareem Mayfield told me a while ago he wanted that fight. Canelo versus Barry Hunter. Richardson Hitchens, he's a beast. I like him. His fight got taken out. He was supposed to fight on um, Broner versus Mikey Garcia, but his opponent pulled out. Probably didn't want no work. Ugh, and a pussy back. Jeff Horn versus Brunner. Does anybody have Lomachenko in their top five? If so, why? I just want, I'm curious. No, no. AB versus Victor Ortiz. Hell nah, nope. See, that's what I told y'all. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. We getting boxing back to where it needs to be, where we can actually have conversation, not a, just a bunch of shit talking, name calling and stuff. Like me, if you put Lomachenko in the top five, I just want to know why. Like, how have you seen more from him than Golovkin, Crawford, Canelo, Floyd? Andre Ward, all with 30 or better fights. That's what that's what I want to know. Like, real boxing talk, not like shit talking and like I just want to know why you would put him there. Like, what, you know what I mean? What two gold medals don't have nothing to do with it. That's the amateurs. You know what I'm saying? That's like, that. what does that have to do with anything? You know what I mean? No one cares what you did with some shit that's not relevant. And that's See, that's the problem with people. People talking about two medals, That that's that doesn't really equate to the pros. You know what I mean? Oddly, Harrison has a, a medal. And what did he do? He got knocked out by the big people he fought. And I'm not saying it's not a personal accomplishment. Obviously, if you get two medals, you probably got skills. But you can't put someone pound for pound because of what they did as an amateur. You know what I'm saying? That's just To me, that doesn't make sense. Let's say I work for Apple and I'm with that company... And I'm telling you, when I used to work with Microsoft and I, I had a certain desk and, and I had a parking space because I worked for Microsoft, Apple don't care about the perks and what I had when I was working with them, do they? That's that's in the past and I no longer work with Microsoft. It's about what you what have you done for me lately? What have you done as a pro? Oh, the fight's on? All right, y'all. I'll be back after. I'm about to go watch this Lomachenko fight. Oh, Beltran? Yeah, I'm going to see if Beltran get a knockout. I just wanted to touch down with y'all. Lomachenko needs to fight Rigano. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to see if Beltran knocks this dude's head off. I don't really know who he's fighting, but let's get it. Peace out. Salute. Ego's Army. Shout out to everybody in the movement. I'm going to see what Lomachenko is looking like. I really can't see how Miguel Mariaga. I don't think he has the style. He has some power, but his power is... Rated at 126, so it's like, what does he have? Like, I don't know. Everyone else took his power at 126. Walters took it. Um, Oscar Valdez. Get back on later for sure. Peace out. I'm about to eat my Hawaiian barbecue and watch these fights. You dig? I'll be impressed if he, if he gets stopped, especially if he, he stopped him like Rocky Martinez. Man, yeah, I got my hats. You see the boxing ego hat at the top. See, even Beltran. Beltran called out Lomachenko. That's a good fight for Loma. If he's going to um, move up to 35. Because that's a guy who has experience. Spar with Pacquiao. Been in there with Terrence Crawford. Been in there with Ricky Burns when he was a uh, champion. Right? He fought uh, Sharif Bogaray, who I believe is with Mayweather Promotions now. You know what I'm saying? He has power, clearly. So... Even something like that would show me more than Miguel Mariaga. Mariaga, like I said, he had decent power at 26, but that's 26, not 30. 
Shout out to Boxer Ego. You're the best. Appreciate it, man. We working. Lomachenko fight. Um, bang, bang, gang, gang. You already know what it is. I don't play fantasy football. I just watch football. I don't know how that works, but... Yeah, I heard about Ray Beltran fighting for the green card. I don't know all the details. Ego, how are you? Man, y'all keep leaving comments. I'm about to get off so I can eat my Hawaiian barbecue and um, watch this Beltran and then Lomachenko fight. Basically. All right, I'm going to holler at y'all. Get the likes up to 200. We had like 166. Hit that like button. Boxing Ego, Ego, the future. Get that bread. We working. ESPN. Last question. Hurry up, because I'm about to get off. Get the lights to 200. Who is more skilled, Ward or Crawford? Wow. Ah, that's that's hard because they fight two different ways. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's that's hard. You know what I mean? Nah, I, I can't really even answer that. That's a good question, though. Yo, Ego, I'm in China. What... What time does the fight start, bruh? Well, Ray Beltran's on right now, and he's the co-main event, if I'm not mistaken. So after one more fight, um, we got the next. So probably 30 minutes, unless he dusts them off quick. We really like you so much. Man, I appreciate it. Uh, Y'all been holding me down for a minute. Show me love. Loma's fighting on ESPN. All right, I'm about to eat, yo. Y'all trying to start me out. We'll be on here all day. Get the lights to 200. We at 190, man. Someone said hit that dab. I'm about to go eat and then watch this Lomachenko. I think Lomachenko's going to be too busy for him. Stay in the chat and don't eat. Nah, I got to eat, man. Ego, the future of boxing. You seem grumpy, Ego. I probably am grumpy because I'm fucking hungry. And y'all won't get the likes to 200. I see people playing games and putting the likes up and taking it back. I don't, I don't care about that. I already got over uh, <laughs> 175 likes. So it's really not that serious. But I'm hangry, exactly. Erickson Lubin, I think that's a good fight. With uh, Jermel Charlo. Let's see it. Shout out to Houston, Texas. Texas, y'all be showing me a lot of love in the live streams. I appreciate that. Do a live reaction. Make sure y'all get the likes up. I'm about to go eat. Hit the like button if you're watching this. Support Real Boxing, Real Boxing Talk. I'm about to go see what Lomachenko's talking about. We nearly there, man. All right, I'm about to go eat. All right, two more questions, and then I'm going to go eat for real this time. Keith Thurman versus Lamont Peterson. That's a good fight, a real good fight. Uh, I would favor Keith Thurman just he's the bigger guy. He even fought at like 152, 153, got a stoppage there. And Lamont Peterson, I don't know what it is about him, but he's been pretty inactive. Like, he, he fought David Avenesian. I was at that fight in Cincinnati. But if you look at it, that was main evented by Broner versus Adrian Granados. Broner's already been back. You know what I mean? Mikey Garcia, I was at his last fight in January. He knocked out Dejan's Latitian, and he already fought back. Meanwhile, Lamont Peterson fought David Avenesian, I think, in an eliminator, and we haven't heard from him. I haven't I ain't heard nothing from him. So, and then before that, he was on a, I don't know who he fought last, Felix Diaz a long time ago? Yeah, ESPN's on the come up. Go eat and come back. All right, y'all. Peace out.